What the hell is that? Is that a camera? I swear to God, I've seen one of those before. What the hell did I use that for? Who, who am I? Hey Google, who am I? Your name is Carrie West and welcome back to my photography channel. Oh, that's right. I had to get out of the city for a little while, even if just for a few hours. This place isn't epic by any stretch of the imagination, but there is water here, which is perfect because I want to talk about tripods, specifically cheap carbon fiber tripods, like this one here. Now, I know tripods aren't the sexiest of topic, but hear me out. If one leg is sexy, then three legs is almost twice as sexy. This is a Gikoto carbon fiber tripod, and it's one of the cheapest carbon fiber tripods I've ever seen. It's about $180. And my question was, is this worth the money for that kind of low price? Because usually a carbon fiber tripod will run you anywhere from 500 to well over $1,000 for a good one. I had a Gikoto before, kind of like the aluminum version of this one, I would say. And uh, it did its job, you know, it, it held my camera up and it didn't fall. It didn't really fail with my camera on it. It did break later on, but I'm, I was pretty rough on it. A while back I bought a FLM travel tripod and that, that's like a serious carbon fiber tripod, even though it's cheaper, it's about $300 for the legs alone. This one is $180 for the legs and a head. So it's, should go without saying that it's gonna be substantially less quality than the FLM, but this goes a lot higher because this has a center column. The FLM, the head attaches directly to the legs and we'll get into that later. So I sort of bought this as a video tripod because I often have two cameras with me. So the old one I had was aluminum and I'm trying to get away from aluminum tripods in general. I don't like the material. It's heavier than it's worth. Uh, carbon fiber is just so much more sturdy and so much more lightweight. But the old one was about 77 inches fully stretched out, which is well over my head. And that's exactly what I wanted out of this one. And this one was actually advertised at 79 inches. And I don't know if they were counting a cinema camera on top of it or something, because this thing does not reach 79 inches. From the ground to the bottom of the plate is actually about 71 inches, which is still good. It's still a little bit taller than my head once it's got a camera on it. So that's pretty much what I wanted. I don't foresee too many situations where I would need anything much taller than this. The reason this one's able to get so tall, as I said, is because it's got a center column and that comes with its own negatives too. Even nicer center column design tripods are not as sturdy as their non-center column counterparts. And the reason for that is that there's just more points of contact. This tripod, you can pull out the center column and it comes with a little piece that you stick in there in its place. And that will allow you to get really splayed out on the ground because with this one, when you stretch these legs out as far as they'll go to get as low as possible, the center column is sticking down and you can only get about this far from the ground. But even with that little piece in there that eliminates the center column, it still behaves like a center column tripod. And by that, I mean it's built around the center column. You can't stick the head directly on the legs. There's always another piece of material that separates the head from the legs. It's essentially in three parts, head, center column, legs, whereas without, like the FLM I'll show you, is just head, legs. So as you can see, it's a bit wobbly even with carbon fiber. Geek Oto seems to have, I was actually looking on their website and they seem to have quite a few higher end tripods as well, upwards of 400 plus dollars. And I can't really attest to their quality. I bought this one and I actually wasn't able to find this one on their website for some reason, but it was on Amazon. And this one kind of looked like the best balance between quality and price, as far as I could tell. And it came with a head, and this head is actually pretty good. The last Gikoto head I had was pretty garbage, and it had a plastic plate clip. And this one is metal. This one comes with a little, actually fairly heavy duty carrying bag, which is, I guess that's cool. I probably won't use it, but somebody might. This head has a level on it, but it's in a terrible spot. Normally when you, when you want to show that your tripod is level, you'll actually need a level down here at the base 
right above the legs to see if the whole tripod is level or not because cameras usually have some sort of leveling system in them. You can get the camera itself level, but when you're trying to do a panorama, if the base isn't level, you're gonna fuck it up and it's gonna be all wonky. This one, as opposed to the FLM, has leg clips instead of screwy things. And I actually kind of like this. A lot of people talk about the ability to tighten all the, the legs with, with one go, but I mean, you can do the same thing with clips. You just grab it or use your fingers and just pull it open. And these ones are actually aluminum, so they feel a lot sturdier than the last really shitty Geek Oto that I had. I think the main contributing factor to the still somewhat lack of stability, as you can see, the legs are a bit jiggly when I do this. And I think the problem is these little ratcheting clips, as nice as I like the ratchet, because when you have it up, you can just pull it down. The FLM doesn't allow you to do that. But as you can see, they're kind of wiggly and wobbly and they're not very thick. They are aluminum, but they're just not very sturdy. So the whole leg actually jiggles a little bit. But again, as a backup tripod, I don't really see that being an issue because usually I'll set it and leave it and I'm not wiggling it around and stuff like that. These legs are substantially stronger than the aluminum one I had before. So I haven't really gone out and used it yet and that's actually why I'm here. I'm gonna try to take some long exposures of the water around here, maybe make some nice minimalist shots. I thought I'd take you guys along for the ride. But anyway, as you can tell, this light fucking sucks balls. It's super hot out still. Too much blue sky in my opinion. I got a few hours before sunset. I'm gonna go chill in the air condition of the truck because I'm a lazy piece of shit. And I'm gonna watch some YouTube or something because you get service out here. That's the perks of being so close to the city. Here in a couple hours, I'll go scout for little minimalist compositions or something. And we'll test out this tripod and see how it does. So we're slowly starting to get some clouds coming in to the west, which is perfect because I prefer soft light for long exposures because that harsh midday sun makes everything look like shit. Nothing particularly exciting, but there is some nice reflections. The water's super still and with a nice long exposure, it'll kind of soften everything out. Well, I think I found something once the sun decides to go the hell to fuck, to hell. At least one little shot that I want to do. I threw the 20 mil on the Sony and I think I'm gonna use a 15-stop Polar Pro. Unfortunately, Freewell doesn't make a 15-stop, which is a huge bummer because 15-stops is one of my favorite filters, but I gotta use the Polar Pro and I have to screw it and unscrew it every time. And I would argue that 10 stop and above are the ones that we really need no threads for because they're the ones that you gotta pull off, focus, and then put back on every 10 goddamn seconds. I think what I wanna do, at least for the first shot, is sort of utilize this and the reflection behind it. Again, the background's not wonderful, but that's not really the point here. I just wanna to try to make a nice clean image. With a 15 stop, these clouds up here will be complete motion blur and they'll be really nice, I think. As far as I can tell, looking at that on the back of my Sony, that one actually turned out a little bit better than I was expecting. I, most of the exposure was during the calm time before the wind picked up, so the last 30 seconds or so with wind didn't really seem to have much of an impact on it. And I actually really like the movement in the clouds as well. They're, they're all either moving away from me or towards me, which is perfect, because when they're moving side to side, it just creates lines and they don't look as good. This creates a lot of depth in the image. putting a lot of faith 
in the G9 autofocus today. I didn't get video of the other two shots because the sun just kept coming in and out and popping back out. I just didn't have enough time to set it up and there were people walking back and forth and I was already taking up enough of the pier. So I just grabbed a couple more shots. I lowered this tripod as far down as it could go with the center column, which again, it's only as high as this center column is gonna let you go. Cause as soon as you splay these out anymore, obviously the center column is just gonna be dipping all the way down onto the ground and you're gonna end up with a monopod, which is not the most stable for photography as far as I know. Honestly, the fact that I could take the center column out is, is it's pretty cool, but you know, most of the time I, I bring two tripods with me because one is for video generally and one is, is for photos. And if I run into a situation where I need to go lower, I just switch tripods. It's, it's honestly easier than trying to pull the, the goddamn center column out every five minutes. Let's see if Lumix wants to focus here. Usually cheap heads don't have these two knobs here. These are both almost the same thing. So you've got, you've got this panning knob down here, the little one, and then you've got two that control the ball head. Tighten them both down, loosen one, and then slowly loosen the other one and it allows you to gauge how much pressure you want to have to apply to move your camera and I, that's amazing and you know when I bought this tripod on Amazon I was like okay we'll get this it comes with a head I'll just toss the head out and get a new one but I'm not so sure anymore this thing is actually not bad I'm gonna keep using this thing as is which is a huge surprise to me so Sony now, in case you couldn't tell. Probably looks a little different, but uh, I'm probably in focus. Uh, I've got the Lumix running a time lapse, and as you probably saw in the time lapse, the sun struggled to poke through. I don't think it's going to happen. The, the strip that I thought was sky is actually looking more like it's just another layer of clouds behind it. So while it is quite orange and it looks pretty cool, um, I don't think it's going to quite poke through and give us any golden hour light. I'm going to wait a few more minutes and find out, but. I did get like a really long five minute exposure, but the pier was rocking the whole time. So I guess you'll have already seen it by this point. We'll see how that one looks, but I'll probably take a few more shorter ones because it's just too hard to get five whole minutes of nobody walking by and the wind not blowing and stuff. So, so I pulled out a little bit early. It's not gonna happen. The, the sun is being totally snuffed out and the whole line beneath it is all just clouds now. Um, but that's okay. I think the shots that I did get towards the end when the wind finally died down are, are gonna be pretty good. I think I can turn them into something quite nice. As far as the tripod, you know, I don't know if you're watching this video because you are looking for a cheaper carbon fiber tripod or if you just like my shitty videos for some reason, or both. I can say that I'd recommend it. It's, you know, it's almost 200 bucks. For what you're getting, I think that's a pretty damn good deal. The, the head is actually quite good. I was curious and I, I, I looked on their website to see if I could find this model and I, I couldn't find it on there. I'm wondering if it's new or if it's discontinued or something. I actually bought it through Amazon. I couldn't find this exact one. I found one that was about 140 bucks. It's similar, but it comes with the shitty head that came on the aluminum one. So. If that's the one you're looking at, don't buy it. And I'll show you guys some pictures of that shitty head so you can steer clear from it, but it's just not a very good head. But the one that's on this one is actually quite nice, especially as a backup tripod or something like that. I still think you should probably invest a little bit more in your main tripod, but as a backup, I think it works great. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, shitty video. I'm gonna go pick up my pug and then go to bed because I have to work tomorrow and I don't want to cry in the bathroom for six hours because of lack of sleep. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.